Hello and welcome to the Future Fuel Cafe. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of my favorite, if not my favorite chat bot, that is Grok. And I've been using Grok on and off for a while. Earlier this year, I was in America visiting family over Christmas and the beginning of the new year. And I actually got access to Grok because when it was released, it was first released in the US. Now I'm filming this back in the UK and I'm happy to say at the point of uh, filming this video, Grok is released to people in other countries such as the UK and Ireland. I think at some other European countries, you'll have to double check that as that's a little bit iffy at the minute and I haven't been over to the other part of Europe to find out yet, so I don't know. But what I wanna do is delve into what is Grok, what is it like to use, the backstory of it, why I personally think in the long run it is gonna be the best one, why I personally choose to use it more than any other one aside from perplexity, which I've made a separate video about. So first off, what is Grok? Grok is Elon Musk's answer to ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, Google Gemini, all of that. It is its answer to its competition via X, via the platform of X, Twitter. And it has been out for a while now, but if you cast your minds back to last year, which seems like a very long time ago in the space of AI now, we had all of these different chatbots coming out, but one of the people at the time who said we should put a halt to it was Elon himself, as much as I do like and respect what he is doing. He said at that time, we should put a halt to all of this AI sort of stuff for six months or if not more uh, of a longer period of time of a halt to safeguard it, put rules in place to allow technology to sort of catch up and our understanding to catch up. So it doesn't keep developing ahead of us. So we sort of playing catch up the whole time. But in that time when we had this break, he opened a company called XAI, which was then integrated with uh, Twitter, with X when he obviously bought it. And then he, in November of last year, released Grok. He, in that time, even though he said we're putting a halt to it, no, he was developing his own chatbot. Grok is based off, and this is in Elon's words, this is based off of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a science fiction franchise created by Douglas Adams, originally from a 1978 radio comedy broadcast, and it is actually pretty much integrated using this as a sort of foundation with how it gives its answers and how it sort of interacts in general. So that's another interesting thing to know. So moving forward, let's delve straight into what Grok can do, what I like about it, play around with some prompts, and I'll just show you what it looks like. And what Grok can actually do, it has a regular mode, but it also has a funny mode. So let me just jump into my laptop and show you what that actually is. So up here, this is what Grok looks like, by the way. So if we're on the home page, this is what it looks like. This is the usual X platform, as you can see, down here you have all your little normal stuff. Here where it says Grok, this is where it's integrated in. Straight away you can see it takes you to the um, speaking window where you can enter the prompt, right? First off, I wanna show you the two different modes. You can see it's got fun mode, regular mode. Now Grok version one, this has been said to have been coming out since March, if not even earlier. This is why I didn't make a video about it even earlier because it also said, I saw in the news that it was gonna be released earlier again to the wider audience. When I left the US, I was coming back to Europe. I thought I'd be able to make a video about it, but I couldn't because it wasn't released. So that is what it is. So when they are releasing that, I don't know. But at the minute you have fun mode and regular mode. So fun mode, if we click on that, you just see it changes. If I say roast, roast me grok, and I say at the Future Fuel Cafe, which is my Twitter X handle, and I press enter. Hypothetically, it is going to look at my account, see what it finds funny about me, and then roast me, literally, as it says. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, so you wanna be roasted, do you? Well, here goes nothing. You know, I've been called many things in my short existence, but Roast Master wasn't in the list until now. Um, let's have a look and I think again just pause the video read through it if you want to have a laugh at my expense please do I encourage you to but in all honesty you know what they say curiosity kill the cat well in your case it might just be that things get you roasted by an AI but you can do funny things like that or if I say give me a funny answer about chat GPT there we go, let's have a look at that. It's like the overly serious cousin who always follows the rules, never cracks a joke. <laughs> you see, and it's not bad, you know? It's not bad. So that's fun mode for you. So if you wanna have a laugh, take it more lightheartedly. That's where I think you'll see more of its rebellious streak. Though, if you do cross over into regular mode, and we just create a new web page here, I think this is where you'll find more of it just giving actual answers in a more normal tone, not as funny, a little bit more serious, but still in its unique way. So for example here, if I said, give me 10 of the best ways I can you t 
utilize you. There we go. And then this is basically just saying what are the 10 best ways we can utilize it. So if we just let it load, see what it comes up with. So it gives information retrieval. So it gives you up-to-date information on a wide range of topics, news, language translation, personal assistant, which is actually quite good at, though I use the Perplexity plugin for that a little bit more because it has access to the wider internet. Made another video about that. Anyway, I digress. Learning and education, health and fitness, entertainment, uh, travel assistance, financial management, emotional support. interesting uh, and creative inspiration so different things like that I think it is really good at and I really like the fact that Grok is baked into X itself because also where I get a lot of my ideas inspiration and sort of keep up with the latest AI news is on the X platform itself because I find a lot of the AI uh, I find that a lot of the AI companies they release a lot of their latest news or they just make new announcements of the latest AI uh, tech to come out through here better and I find it's just better integrated and I just yeah I don't know it just works for me so I think altogether it really works well we can now put in for example uh, what new AI text to video software is coming out so straight away we can hit enter and see what we get so now it's researching it's looking all over the latest news on the X platform itself and then straight away, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, I love it. And this I already am aware of, but if you didn't know about this, then here we go. But we have Vio, which was announced this week by Google, Sora, which I've already made a video about, but again, it's released actually some new samples of the videos it can create. And yeah, just looks like the best out there in terms of AI text to video generation. We have another one here that I'm not actually familiar with, Latte, which is a software that turns ideas into reality by combining AI generated visuals, music, and realistic voices. And then the other one that's just come out as well recently was Vidu. And again, this is China's answer to Sora from ChatGPT from OpenAI. And that also looks really, really phenomenally good and interesting. So again, any of these ideas are here and this is just some of the latest stuff. Then if I wanted to know now and I was like, okay, well, these are some new companies I haven't heard of, for example, I could paste this in and say, give me a list of 10 AI text to video companies hit enter and then I mean we've already got four but let's see what it generates again if you want to be a little bit more specific in researching new companies and again Veo as it's just said Sora Latte again just repeating the first ones it's already said Vidu and as it keeps going Runway as uh, I've heard of that in video of course Deep Brain AI that I'm not familiar with that too much and it just gives you that is it flick flick fl I don't know how you say that. Anyway, yeah, so you get the idea and it gives you these list of 10 AI text to video companies or AI video generation companies. And like this, this is where I spend a lot of my time researching, interacting with it. And I just think it is really phenomenal. I, I really do. And then if we wanted to be a little bit more particular or nitty gritty, we could say to it this, we could say generate five different video ideas for me about AI text to video from the above listed companies. So from the above 10, let's say from the above 10 listed companies, so we know it's specifically on about that list of 10, it's gonna generate five different video ideas on that and we can see what it comes back with. As it goes through these, you can say, it, it gives you the actual context of what to do. Create a video that focuses on runways, advanced AI text video capabilities, and it just gives you an idea. Then you could say again, if you wanted, we could say something like, let's have a look. I've already done Sora, VO, Let's do Runway, because I haven't actually played around with Runway recently and I want to make a video about it anyway. So if I said, give me a semi-detailed script in the style of bullet points for idea number five about Runway. Introduction, understanding the technology, see how it gives you all the different bullet points underneath in a very brief way so you can expand on those points then. Key features, step-by-step -step process, examples and inspirations, challenges, limitations, future potential. So just like that in the space of a few prompts, you have got an idea and you can run with it. I mean, I may even 
uh, use this in the future. So again, just to give you one example of how you can use it. And we can say, what is the latest AI news that I could make a high ranking SEO YouTube video about that is also evergreen content? What I mean by evergreen is that it's searchable, not just in the short term, but more the long term as well. It's not just like short form news and then it will die a death after. It will be searchable in six months time, maybe even a year's time. Give me a list of five different ideas with explanations as to why it is good. I see what it says, Google's AI overviews, revolutionizing search, Google video, generating video, uh, video model, YouTube and Google's AI crackdown. And then we have Google, Google Edge in AI, custom GPT video SEO optimizer. And then if I wanted to make it a little bit more specific with the list is generated, I could put this in, I could say edit the list so it focuses on AI video generation, specifically AI text to video. This is why I really like it because it is just using up to date news where a lot of the other ones are semi cut off or, you know, you get different answers, controlled answers, depending on the subject that you are looking at. Google's Imagine Video and Veo. Uh, we have Runway Gen 2. We have AI video generation, a breakout year in 2023. Though I've changed up to 24, of course, but maybe it's a you know, overall analysis of the previous year of how far AI video has come, AI video generation. OpenAI Sora, a new era for AI video generation, the evolution of AI video generation. Using the latest news, you've just gone off in a different direction with how you can generate video ideas. And it is just that easy and that simple. I just think paying to have the premium access to this, it's, yeah, I, I just think it's a no brainer because it's unique. It's different and I just think having that news gives it a cut above the rest for this type of stuff. Then this is one that we can do as well. This is the simplify it to me. So what is a LLM, which is a large language model. So that is Grok, that is ChatGPT, that is any chatbot effectively. I've said, what is a LLM? Explain it to me as if talking to a five-year-old, give me an example. LLM is like a super smooth robot that's really good at understanding and making sentences in different languages. It's like a friend who's read a lot of books and can use the knowledge to answer questions or tell stories. For example, it's, it, if you asked the LLM, what's the weather like today? It would use its knowledge to tell you the current temperature and conditions like it's sunny and 75. So there is your short but sweet answer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you some of the positives that I really love about Grok, but also some of the negatives that I'm really not too sure about with Grok, right? What I really love, it has access to real-time data. I love the fact it has, you know, if something happens, you're pretty much gonna know straight away about it on X. It is just integrated, it's unique, no one else has access to that outside of the platform. So in a way it is exclusive and I like the way they sort of make you pay for that because, well, it keeps it exclusive and if you want some, if you want access to something, well, you should charge for it to an extent, depending on how you look at it, but that's the way he's going with it and in a very competitive market of chatbots and stuff like that, that is its unique selling point. What I also love is that it understands the prompts and the commands really well and it gives the answer first time straight to the point without me really having to go in and edit it. I find that it's more, I just like the way it's intuitive and it just seems to understand it better what I'm trying to find out on AI news, like I showed in the previous section of the video. And I just like the way it integrates. I just like the way it works, it flows, it has a bit of humor to it, it makes it more entertaining. Like you're semi talking to a, not a human of course, but something more than just a flat, boring chatbot that just answers in a very meh, 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 meh. It has a bit of an expression to it. It has a rebellious streak as Elon says himself. So I really like that. It also gives more balanced answers across subjects. So straight to the point, it's more balanced, it's less biased or it's side to side to an extent and it just gives a more neutral viewpoint and I like that. That's how I think things should be. I believe in freedom of speech so I've always said that and I will stand by that. So that I will always support and I love that. That's another reason why I am a big supporter of what Elon is doing with X and what it is doing with Grok. It also has a sense of humor which I like. Again, fun answers. It's not stale. It's not static. It's funny. It just makes it entertaining. It makes it more of an overall package that's intelligent, smart. I can use it but of course I have a bit of fun with it at the same time and I still get the same information whilst laughing. What I also like as well, it can write out basic code and it can create basic games. Now really, I've seen that. I haven't really played around with it as much because I'm not really into coding. It can do video creation to the extent of writing out scripts. It can generate video ideas. It can also solve problems and it can give you reminders and it can just really compared to the other ones, again, 
just do it pretty well. So now on to the negatives, because even though there are many positives that I really like, I am a neutral character also. So there are negatives that I don't like and that need to be improved against its competition. Again, chat GPT, so on like that. When it gives examples or links to other websites where it's got information from, you can't actually click the link. It says it will work, but when you either copy and paste the link and it will take you to the supposed website, sometimes it actually fails, it doesn't work. And I would like them to be able to, if it references something like perplexity, which for me is the best at doing this. I love the chatbot little plugin. It's just the best like equivalent of Google to me as a search engine, it's incredible. It gives the link where we got the information from and it can back it up with that source, whether it's right or wrong, who knows, but it can back it up is my point. Here, you can't as much because it doesn't give the link. So I'd like that to be sort of built in and compare the chat GPT, which has released the GPT store, which you can basically create your own GPTs and you can then use that. You can then be super, super creative with how you want to create your own language model. Or you want it to do anything you want it to do. That for me is a very big, unique selling point. And again, I haven't played around with it myself, but there are people who I've seen are making their own GPTs and then selling them as a passive form of income. So that's also potential to have a revenue stream right there. Also, two other things that I don't like, for example, what, again, ChatGPT, like for example, with NVIDIA AI, you can put in a prompt into ChatGPT, say, I wanna create a video about, I don't know, the top five places to go in Spain. You can then take that using NVIDIA AI, which is integrated into GPT, into ChatGPT, and you can then go with that press a button after it's created the initial prompt and what it will look like with the script, the images, sort of that, the voiceover. And straight away, it goes from ChatGPT across to the NVIDIA AI website and straight away it's loading, it creates the video from that. I think just integrating other AI tools into Grok would be really, really cool and something I would love to see it do. Also, what I don't like is that when it says in the fun mode, it can it can roast your channel, it can roast your uh, unique sort of stuff that you, basically the stuff that you post about, it can roast you and it can be unique to your profile. So when I have done it in the past, it has been extremely inconsistent to the extent of when it said, I I post about global warming. I post about, you know, saving the planet, stuff like this, stuff like that. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it is wrong in the sense that I don't post about that stuff. Obviously the subject of that, completely different conversation, but the actual, the actual point of it saying, I make posts about this, I'm a massive advocate about it. I haven't posted anything ever about it. So my point is it's wrong. It just seems like randomly generated the answer. So that's something that is, not so good, if I'm honest. I think they could make it more, well, make it do what it says on the tin. One thing I would like it to be able to do eventually as well is AI image generation. So sort of like now what uh, ChatGPT is able to do with DALI, I would like it to be able to take that and integrate that with, I did see this not too long ago, I'm gonna see if I can find the post, but there was a rumor that Grok or X was gonna be integrated potentially with Midjourney, which would be absolutely incredible. What's happening with that, I do not know. I'll try and find the post and put it on screen somewhere here, but I do remember seeing that. But again, I think that's where it lags behind in those stages, and that's why you wouldn't end up using Grok for that sort of stuff. AI video generation, AI image generation, stuff like that. Again, you could use it to create the prompt, to then post into Dali, to post into Leonardo, into Mid Journey or something like that. But it would be nice if you were able to create the prompt, hit enter, and then it generate the image in the same chat instead of going, instead of having to go off platform. So right now I'm gonna be reading these two things and I'm gonna be up on screen now. These are basically questions I asked directly to Grok itself in regular mode. Again, you'll be able to see it on screen. But basically, what is the future plans of Grok? One thing is Grok 1.5. So I asked Grok itself, what is Grok 1.5? When is it being released? Grok 1.5 is an update to the Grok AI system developed by XAI. And then it brings several enhancements, including improved reasoning capabilities and context length of 1,000, no, of 128,000 tokens, which is a significant increase. And then we also have down here, and then it just basically says that Grok 1.5 was announced on March 28th, 2024, and it was made available to early testers. Though when I actually go and try and find these early testers, I can't really find anything about it. So again, this is what I mean. It will make this answer, but I can't find where it got the information from. So this is where I find it a little bit frustrating. But I said, what are its overall plans of 2024, right? Then it goes, in 2024, Grok is set to become an even more powerful and versatile AI tool with a wide range of features and capabilities. Here are a rundown of what you can expect. 
Enhanced AI text to image generation. Well, at the minute that doesn't exist, but it says here Grok will be able to generate high quality images from textual descriptions, allowing users to create custom visuals for their projects or presentations. Then again, that's why I just said maybe we're working with Mid Journey, Light Rumor, whether that's going to happen or not, I do not know myself. Then you have AI text to video generation. Grok will be able to, will be capable of generating short video clips based on text input. Then improve natural language understanding, integration with the platforms. Again, I would really like to see that happen, like ChatGPT has done with NVIDIA as an example and DALI. Then you also have advanced AI capabilities. Grok will continue to develop its AI capabilities, including advanced reasoning, problem solving, and creativity. So there you go. That's what it's planning on doing, but when it plans to release them, is that this year? I do not know. I obviously hope it is because I am a massive supporter of X, Elon and what he is doing with Grok and everything in that sort of realm. So I really would like to see it take off and be integrated and that actually given date so we have something to look forward to. But I also think as well, just from an actual advertisement point of view, being able to build more of a fan base, get people's awareness of it more from a marketing perspective so they can actually see how good it actually is. Like that's what I believe in it. There are many people that believe in it, but I would just like to see that to a wider audience. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful, useful, play around with Grok, get access to it, see what it can do, see what you personally think of it compared to the other chat bots. But like I said, I've said that that's why I love it for these reasons. And yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is there anything I did miss? And there's some things that I don't even know about, but overall really love it. And that's what I think of it. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.